there, Lindsay here, the Frugal Crafter, and I'm going to show you how to make this card here today for two reasons. One reason is because I had a viewer ask me how to use a flourish die. She just got a new die cutter, and she was wondering how to incorporate a flourish design in her card. Uh, the other reason is because um, after my video on cutting thin dies last week, um, Cherry Lynn Designs sent me a few dies to try and they also sent me a new plate. They said, listen, Lindsay, the plate you're using, um, they didn't make that anymore. That's really old. It's like circa 2005 when my machine came out when I got it. And um, why don't you try this and see how you make out with the new platform. So if you look at the old platform here, you might have one of these if you, ha if you have one of the older big shots. Um, if you look at the thickness of that, this... Um, it's, it's a little thicker than the plastic plate on this machine, on this, what do you want to call it, um, new platform. So this is about as thick as the uh, new platform with one tab. They have these little tabs that kind of fold over to make them thicker for use with more dies. So when I have both of these tabs together, you can see this one's actually quite a bit thicker than that one. And that makes up the difference so you can use it with the thin dies that are so popular right now. So um, what I'm going to do is put this in my machine. I'm going to put on one of my pads. They did send me some new pads because apparently they felt pretty sorry for the pads that I had, but you know what? I just cleaned them and straightened my old ones out and I did just do a video on that. So they're working fine. I'm going to keep these until they, um, until they stop working. Then I'll switch over to the other ones. I'm going to put this metal plate they sent me. Um, now I had made a metal plate out of some flashing that I found in my garage. The flashing plate worked just as well. This plate is steel, however, so I think if you had those magnetic bases, you'd probably want the steel one, the steel one, so the magnet vibes would go through <laughs> the plate, I guess. But the flashing did work equally as well. But I gave that to my friend Kathy because she didn't have one um, since I got this one in the mail. Thank you very much, Cherry Lynn. Uh, then I'm going to put a, um, a die down. And so they sent me this cute set. Uh, they sent me a few sets. Uh, they sent me this cute little set of flower leaves and thingies. And they sent me um, this lovely flourish, which we're going to use these in the card. And they also sent me a high heel die, which is um, kind of pretty too. And I have cut that and you'll see a project on my blog using that um, in a bit. So first up, we've got this die here and it's got some embossed petals, which I thought they looked just like a poinsettia. Poinsettia? Poinsettia. Oh boy, let's get into that discussion again. Um, and I'm going to cut this blade side up on top of my new platform with both of the tabs engaged and the metal shim. It cranks through a lot easier. Um, so when they sent me the platform, I was thinking, I don't need another platform. What I have works fine. I can't imagine it's going to make any difference, but honestly, it was like having a new machine. So I stand corrected. I honestly didn't think it would make a bit of difference in the world, but it's really, really great. The nice thing about this too, if you look at my waist piece, it makes an awesome stencil. You could line it up a few times and make a really cool stencil too. So I'm always looking at ways to use my scraps and that's a great way to use your scraps. And one pass through is cutting these. Now they're not as detailed as a doily, but, um, but they are the thin dies. Uh, we did try this out with a doily and it worked really well, but sometimes you needed two passes with the really, really detailed ones. So I'm going to tap that, get those guys out of there. And then there's little pokey holes. I'll have to poke out the little, um, those little dots there. So I'm just setting these aside because these are going to be my poinsettia petals and, um, and leaves. And, uh, the guy from Cherry Lynn, his name is Michael. Um, he said, or Mike, he said that, um, I've actually paint this with a nonstick metal. So you really don't need the wax paper. So that was kind of cool to know uh, for their dyes in particular. So yeah, I'm gonna have to poke those little holes out later. All right, we also want to cut a flourish. So I'm gonna use this right here. I've only, you have to bear with me, I'm not as probably slick as other people that demonstrate because I am not, um, I'm not that familiar with the dies yet. So this is kind of, we're learning together. Isn't that exciting? And crank this through. I'm really glad I straightened my pads out though because they are a lot better to use when they're not bouncing and wanting to spring all over the place. So this is really detailed and I was very surprised when I cut this and it came out in one piece, all embossed and beautiful. And what I also like is that your negative piece, of course you could use it for a stencil, but it would also make a really pretty card background just to save the leftover piece and stick that down. So there's my little flourish. All right, and there our die cutting adventure is done for the moment. 
Let me set these out of the way. And I'll put them in my little binder when I'm done. The, the bigger kits also came on a little piece of magnet, which was kind of cool. So I can just slide it in my binder. All right, so, oh, oh, you know what? I have to show you one more thing. <laughs> I am so forgetful. Um, so the tabs that I was telling you, the tabs are for different things. If I open it, open this up and let this hang over the edge, let the tab two hang over the edge, that's how you need it for when you're gonna emboss. So I've got a piece of cardstock here in this embossing folder. It's a Darice embossing folder, but any brand is fine. And then you use both of your cutting pads, just like you would with your old platform. If anybody else in the world has the old platform, and I'm not the only person, sometimes you feel like you're the only one, you know? Goodness gracious, get in there. Yeah, my die cutter isn't bouncing and shaking all over the place. It does make a difference. It is easier to crank through, um, and it's still cutting through everything, so that's definitely exciting. Put that out of the way. Okay, so here we go. That's all embossed. I am going to ink it up with a color duster just to give it a little bit of a... You know what? I'll do it right on this so that it won't... Just want to give it a little bit of color, make the embossing stand out. I'm going to zoom in a little bit. So, you know, two birds with one stone. This tutorial is for the lady that wanted to know how to use flourish dies and to uh, also try out my new goodies from Cheery Lynn. Um, uh, full disclosure, they sent those to me at no cost um, to try out. So I am giving you my honest opinion about what I think of them. All right, so I have a little craft card base here. That is a little close, I think. Um, and I am just gonna stick this paper down. This is a really fun, this is a Christmas card. I get myself, I gotta see which way I want this. I get myself kind of um, behind at Christmas time and then it's like, oh my gosh, I wish I had an extra Christmas card. So throughout the year, if I need to, need to glue something, need to make something, then it's Christmas card. Cause I know I'm gonna need them and wish I had more come Christmas time. All right, just stick that right on top. Okay, now we're gonna layer the flourish. And the cool thing about this, I'm actually gonna let the other elements I put down kind of glue that flourish in place. So I'm gonna set that on like that. So when I glue down the, the, the leaves for my flower, it's actually gonna kind of trap down that. Now you could get all fancy and you could like um, emboss the back of your leaves with a ball tool if you want to, but um, if this card's gonna get mailed, it's gonna get flattened out in the mail, so I'm not even gonna worry about that. I'm gonna use my hot glue gun to stick some of these down. I feel like I need a third hand here to hold my, my card closed while I'm doing this. And I know it's probably some really fancy adhesive that you're supposed to use with these really intricate dyes that I don't know about. That's, that's funny because Die cutting did not come natural to me. It's not like I saw die cutters and I wanted to have them. In fact, my first experience with a die cutter was the old red Sizzix machine that had a pump on the handle and it was a pain in the butt and you had carpal tunnel syndrome after you used it for like, you know, 10 minutes. And I thought, there's no way I'm going to get into this hobby where you've got to buy all these, buy all these expensive dies and that thing's a pain to use. And I had used it at a, a scrapbook store. And then out came the big shot and um, I actually didn't even know it was around. My mother... Uh, bought me one for my birthday and I was thinking oh I'm gonna need to spend so much money just to get stuff that I can use with this so I was a little I was a little disappointed I didn't think I was really gonna use it um, but then you know I bought a couple dies the thick dies that you know were very versatile and then I ended up using it a lot and um, so it ended up you know being a really good buy I'm gonna put that there and also anchor a little bit of my flourish down Let's see if I can find that yellow brad that I pulled out a second ago. Uh, there, see, so those are actually holding my flourish in place. There we go. Let's see if I can find that yellow brad that I... So I can find it. Look at that. It's right on my table. If I can pick it up, that'll be another thing. All right, so these little, these little petals, I am going to bend them a little bit to give them some dimension. They already have the embossing on them, so I don't need too much. I'm just going to, you know, give them a little bit of a crease in the middle. Um, so anyway, you know, as years went on, I'd pick up a die when I had a coupon or when they were on sale and um, built up my collection that way. And I've really enjoyed using that machine, and I, I probably use it every day. So 
um, you just never know. You never know how useful a tool is going to be. And um, I held off a long time before getting any thin dies, being that they can only cut paper, and I had an electronic die cutter. Um, so I was very choosy about those, and then having trouble cutting the ones that I did get um, was kind of discouraging. Um, so when I came out and said that I didn't care for thin dyes, so many people were like, you can't say that. There's so many good ones out there and I love them. You got to give them another chance. And so I did. And, um, and look at, look at us now. Look at me now. <laughs> this is kind of fun with these little, these little, uh, punch outs. I, I didn't look for examples on how to use this die before I, I started playing with it. So this is kind of my interpretation of what you'd make with this die it may be completely different than what somebody else would do, but that's, that's cool. I might look at it and realize that it's not a poinsettia at all. It really should be a different kind of flower, but that's all right. Cause I can use it for poinsettia or poinsettia. Poinsettia. I always say poinsettia, I think more often than not. Once I get this arranged just right, I'm gonna put some hot glue in the back and glue her down. Cause I like my hot glue. Well, there you have it. It's a very quick and easy card. Um, the other one I did, they're pretty much the same thing. And um, I really like the new platform for my Big Shot and the um, the Cherry Lynn dies. So I want to thank Cherry Lynn again for sending me these, um, these beautiful dies. And if you have any questions, leave a comment below and I will get back to you. And um, I hope this helped everybody. Oh, on this card, I cut that little leaf off because it's hanging too high. So there I left the leaf on. So don't be afraid to cut stuff off your die cuts when you're working because they're your die cuts. After you cut it out, cut paper, trim it around, cut it apart. Do whatever you need to do to make it work for your design. Thank you so much for watching. Thumbs up if you like this video and subscribe so you don't miss any others. And until next time, happy crafting.